That Saturday morning, the 26th, my special Kremlin phone rang. It was one of my friends, a physicist. He told me that there was an accident at the Chernobyl atomic power station. Well, since I'm a journalist, I phoned our correspondent in Kiev immediately. He'd only heard rumors, but he didn't know anything about it. I said, get in your car and go to Chernobyl. I was in my office that Saturday. I used to spend all my Saturdays in the office. Late in the day, I heard something about an explosion at a nuclear station. So I asked the director of the Council of Ministers, what happened? I was a Politburo member and the first deputy prime minister, but I knew nothing. Then I got some puzzling news. Our Ukrainian correspondent called me back and said that the roads were blocked by the military. He got past them, but was then stopped and sent back by the KGB. The radioactive fire burned out of control in Chernobyl throughout Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. What was in control was the Soviet news system. Not a single word about the accident appeared in any newspaper, on radio, or on television. The instructions were uh, traditional. That is to say, we had to uh, play down the catastrophe to uh, prevent panic among the people. Uh, and, and to fight against what was then called bourgeois falsification, bourgeois propaganda and inventions. But Chernobyl's radioactive cloud could not be contained within the borders of the Soviet Union. Swedish scientists detected it on Monday, day three. The changing winds would carry it all over Europe. The Pravda science editor knew that only an explosion of the reactor itself could have produced so much radiation. I went to the chief editor and said to him, something really serious has happened at Chernobyl, if it's got to Sweden. He said he would make inquiries in the Central Committee. Then he called me back and said, forget about it. They told us not to interfere. It was then that I realized how serious it was. I called Alexander Yakovlev, secretary of the Central Committee, and said to him that in my opinion the matter was really serious. He said, I'm told it's nothing serious. Calm yourself. Don't get involved. There was no such ban. But we didn't know what to say. What should be reported? We were afraid. Would we cause unnecessary panic? It was only the Politburo, the Communist Party's ruling cabinet, that could decide how much information to release and when. On Monday morning, all of a sudden, Gorbachev called a Politburo meeting. What's more, it was in his office rather than the regular meeting room. He called this meeting because we weren't getting any information from inside the Soviet Union. But reports from Sweden, Poland, Germany, and other European countries were reporting high radiation. In other words, the news had broken worldwide. And only then did Gorbachev assemble us for that meeting. Their dilemma was whether to tell what they knew about the accident or to hush it up with the usual kind of uninformative bulletin. A real test of Glasnost. The Politburo was split. I said that we should release reliable information immediately because all of Europe already knew. I was rudely interrupted by Yegor Likachev. 
the conservative Yegor Likachov was Gorbachev's deputy. He said, what do you want? What information do you want to release? I said, come off it. We can't conceal this. I must say, Alexander Yakovlev also wanted to come clean. To speak against Glasnost on this was pointless. Everyone already knew. But Ligachev overpowered us. That's just how it was. I was not that powerful. I worked within the Politburo, strictly following the traditions of the party. Collective leadership has never been a burden for me. The Politburo reached a collective decision. The official news agency, TASS, released this sparse bulletin. An accident has occurred at Chernobyl nuclear power station. One of the automatic reactors has been damaged. Measures are being taken to eliminate the consequences of the accident. Aid has been given to the victims. A government commission has been set up. There was an extra line for us that read, it is forbidden to publish anything but this task bullet. It was hardly surprising that people missed its significance. One physicist was baffled by a call from a colleague demanding his presence at Chernobyl. I said, what's up? And he said, haven't you seen the papers? There was only this tiny announcement that there had been an accident in Chernobyl. Well, all sorts of accidents happen. A police car took me to Chernobyl, and even then I still didn't understand. Here I was in a light suit and a white shirt with a, with a tie and my little briefcase. <laughs> and they said, get changed now, we're going to fly. Where to? How? Don't worry. I changed into the military uniform they gave me. We flew over the reactor, and for the first time, I saw what had happened there. <laughs> 